Lisa Irwin was only 10 months old when she disappeared from her home in 2011. Despite her tragic story making national headlines as police searched for baby Lisa, after more than a decade, no one has been able to find her, although the police initially suspected her mother. Deborah Bradley, of being involved with her disappearance, they have not found evidence to charge her. Bradley believes that a random intruder quietly slipped baby Lisa out of her crib and escaped into the night, never to be seen again. There are more questions than answers surrounding the disappearance of Lisa Irwin. But the main question remains, where is baby Lisa Irwin? Lisa Renee Irwin was born in Kansas City, Missouri on November. 11, 2010, to Jeremy Irwin and Deborah Bradley. They described her as a sweet and happy baby who loved being with her five and eight-year-old brothers. Then one night, just weeks before her first birthday, Lisa Irwin disappeared. According to Jeremy Irwin, he returned home from work at about 4 a.m. on October 4, 2011, to find his door wide open and all the lights on. When detectives questioned Lisa's mother, Deborah Bradley, she initially claimed that she checked on the baby at about 10.30 p.m. m. the night before. However, Bradley later admitted that she had been drinking with a friend and couldn't remember exactly when she last saw Lisa. The only time she could recall definitively seeing baby Lisa was around 6.30 p.m., before she started drinking. Bradley said that little Lisa was then in the crib and sound asleep. But by the time Jeremy Irwin went to check on Lisa, she was gone. We just got up and started screaming for her, looking everywhere, she wasn't there, Bradley said to reporters. Initially, investigators ran with the theory that a stranger kidnapped her. FBI investigators worked overtime to test the idea but couldn't prove it one way or another. And it was the uncertainty surrounding her disappearance that began sparking the theories that persist to this day. On October 19, 2011, cadaver dogs were called to the home. There, the dogs came up with a hit. The dogs picked up the scent of a dead body in Bradley's bedroom, near the bed. When confronted with this evidence, Bradley claimed she initially didn't look for her daughter because she was afraid of what she might find. Investigators also accused Deborah Bradley of failing a lie detector test, though she claims they never showed her the results. At one point, investigators claimed that they knew Bradley was guilty but that they didn't have enough evidence to arrest her for the crime. Deborah Bradley's former friend, Shirley Pfaff, began speaking to the press. According to Pfaff, Bradley had a dark side, one that could be predisposed to murder under the right circumstances. When the story broke, it was a normal morning in my house. I got up, put on a pot of coffee and turned on Good Morning America like usual and I, heard, Deborah Bradley. Faf said, I immediately thought, this can't be the Debbie I know. It just seemed unreal until I walked back into the living room after hearing her voice. I just about collapsed. It just made me sick because I just wouldn't put this girl Debbie past anything crazy. Further investigations into baby Lisa Irwin's disappearance despite her ex-best friend's accusations and from law enforcement, Deborah Bradley has never been formally charged with the disappearance. Or the murder of her daughter, Lisa Irwin. What's more, the most popular theory today is that baby Lisa was kidnapped by someone who wasn't related to her or her family in the weeks after Lisa Irwin's disappearance, two witnesses came forward and said they had seen a man carrying a baby down the street where Lisa Irwin lived. And surveillance video shows a man dressed in white leaving a wooded area nearby at 2.30 a.m. But when investigators found someone they believed matched the witness's descriptions, only one of them said it could be him. However, when the police looked into it further, his alibi held up, and they have never been able to identify another possible suspect. Another lead came when Jeremy Irwin discovered that three cell phones were missing from the house. He believes whoever took the cell phones has Lisa. And one of the phones made a mysterious 50-second call around midnight on the night of her disappearance. Both Irwin and Bradley deny making it. When investigators looked into it, 
they discovered that the call was made to a Kansas City woman named Megan Wright, although she denied that she was the one who answered the phone. But Wright was the ex-girlfriend of a person of interest in the case, a local transient who lived in a halfway house nearby. We firmly believe that the person who had that cell phone also had Lisa. Today, Lisa Irwin is still classified as a missing person, and the case is still open and active. If you have any information on this case please contact the police. No questions asked, just drop her off with somebody at a hospital, a church, the fire department, the police station, anywhere. Just please bring her home. Jeremy, as we understand, you came home in the overnight hours. What did you find at 4 a.m. when you walked in the door? When I came home from work, the front door was unlocked. Most of the lights were on in the house, and the window was in the front was open. Obviously, it all very unusual. And then I started checking on the kids, checked on the boys first, and then we checked on her, and that's when we realized she was gone. Can you imagine, Jeremy, sure. where anyone who would want to take your daughter, who would want to harm you, or hurt your family? No. Yeah. The only thing I could think of is, you know, maybe somebody wanted a baby and she... I hope that's what it is. What do you want to tell that person other than dropping them off? I mean, what do you want to tell them about Lisa? Um, she's, she's everything. She's, she's our little girl. She's completed our family and she's, she, she means everything to my boys. And we, we, we need her home. I, I can't, I can't be without her. Deborah, how are you Deb explaining to the, to the two boys what has happened? How, just, how are they taking all this in? Um, I, uh, just try to tell them, you know, we're, we're going to stay strong. We're a family. We're going to pray. And, uh, she's going to come home. Yeah, but we have to be strong for her. I understand that you were showing pictures to the boys and that you call her pumpkin pie. Can you talk to us about <laughs> that and what the boys are saying, what they're wondering? Um, <laughs> they just, every time we talk to somebody, the police or anything, and we run up and they give us a hug and say, did they find her yet? We always tell them, not yet, not yet. It's the only thing we know to tell them. Can you talk about what's in your hand here? Um, this is her Barney that she sleeps with every night. She, sometimes she won't go to sleep without it, so. I'd like to have her back so she can have her Barney and her family the brothers, we just, we need her home. Did it look like anything was disturbed in her room? I mean, did anything look out of place other than her not being there? No, no. It's like they just walked in and just disappeared. They took her and took all of our phones so we couldn't call anybody. They took your cell phone? Yeah, they took all the phones. They were on the counter in the kitchen and there was, uh, Whenever I was, we woke up, and I woke up, and he came home, and I was, he said, she's not in her crib, and I said, what do you mean, she's not in her crib? And I just knew, you know, something was really wrong, and we're running around the house, and we're screaming for her, and she was nowhere, and then I said, call 911, call 911, and he said, where are the phones? And they weren't on the counter where I left them, they were gone. Did the boys hear anything at all? You said you, you, you had to wake the boys. Did, did they not hear anything coming in the window? Or I, I don't think so. The, the window that was open is nowhere near their bedroom, so I don't, I don't think they heard anything. They're, they're both pretty heavy sleepers. What's on the other side of that window that was left open? Is that the living room window, a bedroom window? It's, it's a computer room, room where it's an extra living room. Sure. As another day has written? passed now, how do you how do you move forward with police being here, with your lives being? Have you had any sleep? Tell us what you do today. Uh, we've had a couple hours, but uh, not much. I mean, I I close my eyes, I see her. I can't. <laughs> but I mean, we're just trying to hold it together for for our boys and for her. And you know, stay strong for her so that we can try to think of 
anything or anyone or any reason this might have happened. We still haven't, but... <laughs> Are you saying both your bones were taken as well? Yeah. Uh, three, three were taken. Um, one wasn't even working, and it was sitting up there next to the other ones. I was reprogramming all the numbers, and all three of them were gone. What else was missing from your home? Anything else? We didn't, we didn't look, but Nothing I don't think so. I don't Nothing think anything. We, we, we called the cops. We went outside and waited for him, and you know he was looking around outside, and I was you know just holding my boys, and they were crying, asking what's going on, where's she at, why is she gone, and. I mean, you know, the police came and I waved them down. I mean, I didn't even check around the house. I didn't think to care about any of that. I still don't. Did you about your any... last moments with Lisa? What were you doing? <laughs> Just you change her. I mean, you know, get, put fresh clothes on her and get her ready for bed and give her her bottle. And I made sure her binky was in her crib in case she needed it. And... She sleeps with her Barney, and she sleeps with her glow worm and her blanket, and that was, that was it. How Did hopeful you... are you that, that you are going to find her? <laughs> I'm terrified, but I'm trying to be hopeful. You folks said that you didn't, you didn't know anybody <laughs> that might want to do this, but did... Did you notice anyone that had maybe an unusual interest in your child? I know everybody loves her. I mean, I go to the store and everybody says she's beautiful and you know she's she likes everybody. She's she's really playful and she's uh, really sweet and she'll go to almost anyone. I mean, so I I mean I anything beyond that, no. So it wouldn't surprise you that she was picked up without crying. Right. Well, yeah, she was sleeping. You can, I mean, move her around and she, yeah, sometimes she cries. It depends on how, how long of sleep she's had. But, I mean, if you pick her up and you cuddle with her, she, she probably won't cry. Okay. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you. For, for coming out. How much did you consume that day? I had, a, I had several, several glasses of wine. When you say several, more than three? Yeah. More but that five. has nothing to do with her. More than five? Probably. More than ten? No. Was it just wine or was yeah, there just other wine. alcohol? Yeah, just wine. Just wine. Lisa was in bed and the boys were laying down watching a movie with the neighbor's daughter. Were you drunk? Yeah. Do you have a drinking problem? No. I don't think so. Some folks are going to have an issue with you having oh, I'm sure they are. more than five drinks while you're looking after a little baby and two little boys. She was sleeping. You know, I don't see the problem in me having my grown-up time. I take good care of my kids. I keep my house clean. I do their laundry. I kiss their boo-boos. I fix them food. I'm involved in their school stuff. I mean, to me, there's nothing wrong with me doing what I want to do after dark. As soon as I'm done drinking, I go right to bed. Is that what happened which on is, this night? Right, which is why I don't do it until my kids are in bed. Does it happen every night? No, no. How, how many times a week would you say? Maybe a couple times a week. How drunk were you? Just drunk. I mean, were you, were you slurring your words? Were you stumbling? I don't think so, no. Is it possible you had a blackout? It's a, po it's a possibility. I mean, just like anybody else, when you drink, you don't remember the things that happened and stuff like that, but um, yeah, it's a possibility, but it once again has nothing to do with my daughter. Is it possible you blacked out and something happened to Lisa during that time? No. Why? I go to sleep every single time and everybody knows me every time I drink anything. I have actually, we've had get togethers with family over the house and everybody will be drinking and, and hanging out and playing pool and stuff. and. Um, I will, once I've had enough to drink, I just get really tired. I go right upstairs and go right to the bathroom. You don't say bye to people. Did you take any drugs? No. Did, are, are you a drug user? No. Are you on any drugs? No. Nothing. I take anxiety medication, but I mean, it's not narcotic, no. It, it, even before this episode, this event? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and were you taking it that night? Yeah, I take it every morning. When you went in at 1030 after the neighbor left, mm -hmm. what did you do? probably went right to my room. Well, why do you say probably? 
Because um, sometimes I check on her. Well, most of the time I check on her. And then the boys, the room is right next to each other, and I sneak in and make sure, you know, the boys had been awake, and I had went um, in there and told them they could come sleep in my bed. And um, so I'm assuming that I went and checked on her too, but I don't, I don't know. You don't remember? No. So it's possible you did not check on her before you yeah. went to bed at 1030. Yeah, but there's no way that anybody could have got in. So the last time you saw your daughter alive in your home was when you put her down at right. 640. when I put her down, yeah. And the last time you saw her alive was when? Was at, um, at 520 when I had left for work. Jeremy, what's your reaction to hearing this back and forth about Deborah drinking and being drunk and not and blacking out and not remembering everything that ha thing that happened the night that Lisa disappeared. I don't really have much of a reaction. I mean, regardless of what, how much she was drinking or if she was drunk or if she supposedly blacked out or whatever, it doesn't change who you are and mm -hmm. what you do.